Well, good evening here in the United States and good morning in Australia, where my next guest is sitting. Um, we have been doing a lot on your family at home, helping all of us juggle working from home, teaching our children, managing a household, keeping ourselves well, trying to feed the family uh, during these times of Corona. And we don't know how long it's going to take. We weren't prepared for this. We didn't save up for this. We didn't stock our refrigerators and our toilet paper um, in anticipation of this. And we are all struggling. And as positive as we try to be, we're worried about the health of ourselves and our children and our parents and senior citizens and others we know. We are physically isolated. Um, and the only way to not be socially isolated is to be online. So all of the tips we talked about, about limiting the amount of time you and your children face online is out the window because that's the only way we have any human touch these days. So we're looking a lot at, at need, special needs. We're looking at special issues. And this particular uh, guest is someone I've been watching for a while. So Leah, I'm gonna bring you in. And Leah is a certified counselor, you know, genius expert. And um, she is particularly known for her work on resiliency. And I, the little I know about resiliency, I know in connection with cyberbullying because we run Stop Cyberbullying for 20 years. Um, and we know there's all this talk about resiliency, but often in the cyberbullying space, it's used to blame the child uh, for not being tough enough. It's like blaming the woman for wearing a short skirt when she's raped. And they're saying to the kids, well, they need to be more resilient. Everybody else is doing a good job. So I was particularly interested there, but I also really want us to talk about resiliency. We as parents trying to get through all of this, experts like us who are working on the front line in, their, in our own ways, and how we can help our kids survive. So Leah, thank you so much for joining us. And I love when you said mental toughness, we could use some of that. Uh, firstly, Perry, uh, yeah, absolutely. We all need more mental toughness. And if this is not the time to rise, and and really um, embrace and 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 share what what we have in that regard. Then I don't know what is. So, firstly, you know, thank you for the opportunity for this conversation. And um, and yes, as as we were briefly um, sharing before, that you know there are many aspects that are have been forced upon us. Um, and and we're all grappling with how to do things better. And what I actually am really uh, inspired about and what's exciting me is that nobody has the answers. There is no expert in how to drive through and survive and thrive a pandemic, right? Nobody in our lifetime. But what I do know is that when we step in and step up, and 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 um, and share and and come together that we can co-create better solutions. Like I truly believe that Mother Nature has spoken, and we have been doing such a bad job, right? Of, of you know, in in life, in the world, in leadership, um, and so now is our chance to recreate this. And so, um, yeah, absolutely, you know, uh, resilience. Um, bullying, mental health, mental toughness. Mental health is does sit at the core, the foundation of our being. Firstly, you know, on our inside being, right? So there's really three aspects I thought um, that this pertains to is our inner world being, our outer world experiences or dialogue, and then there's our online world, which a lot of us have been playing with, and now we have to be living, working, communicating, both work and play 100% virtually mm -hmm. online. So how do we do that safely and convert all of that like face-to-face -face work and face-to-face -face, uh, connection to online and do it safely? Um, and that does take a resilient being, right? Because as we know, the online world is not, not resilient, <laughs> right? There's no resilience in our technology yet. So how, Leah? I mean, we, we talked briefly. I, I'm usually the first one on the front lines because 
I'm heedless of risks. And they always say I'm a wartime leader. I'm really good at the big stuff and pushing things away. And I'm really bad at the soft stuff and getting help and doing things in the right way. And there are a lot of people like me. I mean, parents who started out saying, I can do this. And they have, a, my, one of my girlfriends has a six-year-old daughter who is energetic and precocious and goes to this wonderful private school in Washington, D.C. And um, although her mother continues to pay exorbitant tuition uh, bills, the daughter was sent home along with everybody else in the school. And the school's reaction was, okay, this is a tough time. Um, as they cash the tuition checks. And this is our plan for you as a parent to teach your child. So eight o'clock in the morning, you have to get them out. They have fresh air. They're part of this because we used to take them on a playground. So they can't do that. So you take them out. Um, and then at nine o'clock, we're going to do this Zoom call. And we are going to tell everybody what they need to do, how they need to do it, and the six things they need to do today. And when we finish the Zoom call, this is the activity sheet. You have to sit down and help your child understand this, help them read if they're pre-readers, help them do this, sit at their side. So all day long, her life has been scheduled by this very expensive school that's continuing to take her money and not teaching online, not offering academic support online, just giving her a to-do list saying, now you raise your child and teach your child. And oh, by the way, run your business at the same time. And I don't know anybody who's going to be able to do that. Oh, and you're not alone, Parry. This is, this is, I'm hearing this in every corner of virtually every uh, every working woman particularly because it just still seems to be the the woman's responsibility to make sure the kids get their work done so how does that professional woman now suddenly manage to get her business done and take care of her kids and this is where and we're seeing this a lot online as well like we're both on LinkedIn there's so many wonderful uh, people coming up with how to's and to do lists and how to do meetings and how to engage and all of that and that's fabulous but before we go there what about the how of who we are being mm -hmm. right who we are being what are our most important needs what is our self-care routine because Again, you know, it's like um, our com the quality of our communication. It's, you know, what I'm hearing is that, you know, these schools have gone into, right, we've got to go into solution mode. We're going to give them a structure. We're going to give them a plan. Absolutely 101 of crisis management on a technical level again. What about the adaptable level, the personal level, the behavioral level, the how are you feeling today level? And, you know, you know I'm so worried about that. And we haven't seen any suicide numbers. Um, mm -hmm. every, I, I know that sexual grooming and sexual predation and violence against women is up substantially in the last month. Um, I mm -hmm. hosted a, a virtual summit to bring together the world leaders on sex crimes against children online. Um, and it, it, they're up. We've got people in those white vans that didn't really exist, but they're now existing and they're driving up and down the street because parents are busy or not home. And the kids are unable to socialize with their friends. So somebody comes by and offers them a puppy or an ice cream cone. And it's amazing how quickly they'll work. But I am very concerned about what this means on suicides. Have you heard anything about mm. that? No one's talked about it on our end. Not yet. Not yet. And indeed, you know, in our media, it's really the mental health aspect of this whole uh, pandemic is, is really just starting to be talked about it's again it's like put out the fires first and now mm -hmm. it's like oh you know and what I'm really pleased about is our frontline healthcare workers are actually getting much more vocal and much more public and speaking up ahead of time around their fears and around what's coming to help us as the individuals take this um, you know physical uh, distancing seriously and the stay at home message seriously and this this comes back to how do we manage our own mental state our how are we speaking to ourselves how are we taking care of ourselves as leaders as as you know people on the front line in our own uh, communities and businesses you know how are we taking care of ourselves so we can turn up and be the best version of ourselves because 
as you know, our communication, 97%, 93% of it is in our energy and our tone, right? Mm. And we see that with, you know, with your leader. It doesn't seem to matter what he says, but he speaks with such authority and certainty that I, I, you know, I don't even hear the content, but he's, you know, because, you know, but people are listening because his tone is so, is full of certainty, right? So we, and this is where we are still following tone. And this is why it's so important that we do gather ourselves together and, and take care of ourselves in the first instance so that we can determine our standards and expectations. What are our absolute musts, our uh, promises to ourselves, our non-negotiables in our behaviour of it within ourselves, right? Firstly and foremost, what is our expectation of others and how are we communicating that online? Because we need to be able to self-manage before we can then look at, okay, what does this mean for how I'm going to manage my children's needs, their education needs? What am I going to demand as help? Why are we not seeing, um, and, and I'm sure in some environments there are, but communal um, uh, facilitated classrooms, right, yeah. where the kids are in, in group Zoom calls and if the teachers, they you know, if they haven't been taught how to facilitate online, there is a sea of coaches out there who are trained facilitators. We are available. You know, ask for help. You know, if a coach can't facilitate a group of people, then, you know, th then they haven't been taught well, right? So yeah. that is a core, you know, skill that executive coaches and, um, you know, and, and psychology trained coaches have. Well, you know, I think, and it's funny as we're looking at, as I'm looking for solutions, and I'm a lawyer, so we're very concrete. It's check the box, done, and we leave it to you and people like you to deal with the lifelong how we got here and kindness and resiliency. And I just was like, these are your settings. This is what you do. Don't <laughs> suddenly, you know. Um, but there are a lot of university students who are home. Uh, there are a lot of those who are in teaching or psychology departments, and there are a lot who are just good people. And I don't know why we can't put them together into a virtual force to help the kids whose teachers can't step in or their union rules won't let them or the school won't let them, but have these. So if there's a worksheet that my girlfriend is supposed to be doing a conference call with somebody on the Hill, uh, she can call one of these kids or reach out to them and get a college student to walk virtually, walk her daughter through the activity sheet and understanding it. So they may not be perfect, but they're better than where things are. And uh, so that's a solution that I'm coming up with, but I still can't deal with the, uh, how do we galvanize ourselves to get our kids through this? I was a lot more hopeful two weeks ago. All these great ideas about how you can balance everything and make homemade bread and jam at the same time. And, mm -hmm. um, now I'm looking at it and there are a lot of people who are tired. There are a lot of people who are working till three in the morning because they can't do it during the day because they have to parent and watch young children in particular. Um, and I think a lot of people who were galvanized for this three weeks ago are running out of energy. So how do we put that back? Yeah. What does self-care look like uh, yeah. to people? Uh, that is such a great question, Perry. And um and and this is this is where it does come back to what matters most to you. We give our attention to what matters most to us. And what I find is that most leaders and change makers, and particularly uh, purpose driven leaders like yourself, you are so ensconced with other welfare, the welfare of others right, that your own welfare, and it's like you have um, inadvertently, unconsciously denied yourself of looking at your own internal needs. Mm. And a lot of people feel, don't want to hear that. You feel guilty. You feel yeah. guilty. Yeah. So absolutely. a lot of people go to wine, I go to chocolate, um, and, you know, we find something that'll get us through the next hour, or the next three hours, because otherwise you feel as though you're wasting that energy that can be used to help so many other people by helping yourself. Yeah, and yet this is what absolutely needs to stop this minute, this minute, because you will run out and you are a finite resource, right? It's like 
Um, and, and, you know, I was thinking about this the other day, <laughs> and this is why having your own personal coach or being involved in a leadership circle facilitated by someone else where you can nurture each other, that sense of community for leaders is so important, right? Mm -hmm. And that's actually why I've just set up a Facebook group called Leading Through Crisis Now, uh, because we as leaders need to nurture each other and have somewhere where we can restore, reset and rise again because we're driven to help others. So let's not make ourselves wrong about that. But we must carve out time and space, preferably first thing in the morning. Like I'm a marathon runner, so my self-regulation mm -hmm. skills are really strong and they're probably on the 10 out of 10 on the mental toughness scale, right? Wow. So, so I don't know if you know what the mental toughness um, psychological frame is, but it is a wonderful framework that ha was developed some 30 years ago, came out of elite sport and uh, fine-tuned and developed by Professor Peter Clough and, um, and Doug Strakarczyk in uh, Manchester in the UK. And Peter Clough is an organisational psychologist and Doug is a, a behavioural economist. So um, together, and this has been very much a psychology model that has four pillars, right? So, so the pillars of um, confidence, challenge, commitment and control. Mm. So, so mental, if you think about what is resilience, right? Resilience is very much how we respond, which is based on our history and, and our background to what's happening now. Mental toughness takes it a step further and it actually helps us respond in the moment. So it's like where resilience plus confidence gives you um, mental toughness, right? So, and this is why as leaders, we need more than resilience. We need more than just to be able to restore and, and, and feel safe. And the self-care is what helps build that resilience. And then, of course, our environment needs to support that resilience. And at the moment, our environment is shutting us down and it's scaring us. It is not supporting a resilience um, experience. So we've got to create that. And we can create that through community of like-minded people. And that's why coming together with leaders like yourself and us regularly having a conversation, like I'm um, hoping this conversation energises you and gives you that lift poof, to keep going and go out again because we're in this together, right? Mm -hmm. And and I'm also challenging you to carve out a um, just, it, it is a little bit like the, the school teacher said, you know, at 8 o'clock you do this, at 9 o'clock you do this, at 10 o'clock there's a lot of, um, you know, uh, structure, structure does uh, help settle overwhelm, right? Because our brains love structure, absolutely love, and that's why frameworks work. That's why plans work. That's why the Kubler Ross uh, grief cycle works because we can see we're on a journey. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, but we won't necessarily see it unless others can shine the torch for us when we feel like we're in the dark. And so mm. that's that's where. Um, Harry, I'm here to support you, uh, others that you connect with and together we're out. We are truly one global community. And, um, you know, and I, and I want to say that I'm here for you. Well, you know, uh, Leah, I really appreciate that. I wanted you to be here on the LinkedIn Live to be here for everybody else. And I'm, I'm getting so much out of this myself. Um, when there was uh, the, the um, tsunamis in Thailand, um, everybody's trying to get money to Thailand, trying to feed people, trying to rebuild the houses to get money to the orphanages and the foster homes that they had there. And um, those of us who work in the really dark, horrible part of the web and understand the sex traffickers owned and operated adoption centers and foster centers for boys to molest. They were raising them to molest. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a phone call with Elizabeth Dole uh, uh, earlier and I, had, and I had said to her many years ago, and I said, you know, you need to know where the bad guys are operating to look like they're the good guys because you can't fund them. You can't raise money from the Red Cross or other groups to fund these groups that are molesting children. That's their sole business model. And we were seeing that. We had to be noisy and we had to stand up quickly before the money got to them. And we had to 
warn people that the children should not be placed back in those institutions because they were just being farmed. And mm -hmm. we're seeing that now. And it's again a very quick, you have to react very quickly. There's uh, a lot of money that's on the table now that's going into education and protection and law enforcement and keeping jobs. And there's going to be a lot of abuse in here. And I want to make sure that before money goes into the hands of providers who are lobbying very hard with the states to provide educational technology, that before the money goes there, that they live up to their privacy, safety, security, and compliance obligations. Uh, because otherwise, once that money's out, we're never going to get them to step up to the plate where they should be. So I'm in this panic, quick do this and help people we can help. And I think there are a lot of other people who are in a different front line. We're not in the hospitals where you don't arrest the bad guys, but we are in a, a trauma mode. We are in a triage mode. We are in a quick, you have to act and help people mode. And yeah. we need to become more resilient. So what's the secret? Yeah. What do we do no. first? If, if there was a magic pill I could give you or a one-line answer I could give you, Parry, I think I'd be a millionaire, wouldn't I? You would. um, and I'm a lawyer. So I'm always waiting yeah. for those one line. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. And I, that's what I love about a really, because, um, you know, I, I, I love a really clear structured, you know, thinking uh, process that, that's able to, to, to uh, you know, you're able to ha have, you have such an enormous capacity right for so much all at once so you know and that's why you do the work that that, that you do as well but you know what are the basics of self-care and you know the great thing about it is that the basics don't change you know it's very much what um you know what 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 a lot of uh coaches and and um and 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 therapists will do it's it's taking that time out to stop to breathe, to, you know, to actually look at the garden, something that is is going to calm you because you've got to, yeah, yeah, and it doesn't have to be long. Two minutes, two minutes every 90 minutes is better than nothing at all, right? But it, and it does uh, come back to how do you then get help to, to start these new behaviours? And that's where coaches really come in to, to the fore because that is about, you know, yes, leading by example, but also helping us with accountability, just like the guides and facilitators and teachers in virtual um, school rooms are helping kids, right? This is where, um, you know, getting the help that you need to stay accountable to, to develop this new routine of how you can do your self-care work first. You and in a way, it's like you know that 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 gas mask that we're talking about. You know that is how you put on your gas mask. So you know what do you do to take care of yourself? For me, I exercise first thing. You know I eat well, but and then I'm also very goal focused. I'm very um, you know structured in in how I go about things. But these these are all learned behaviours. Right. And this comes back to what's the fastest way to do that. And this is where, you know, some it doesn't have to be, a, you know, a 12 month coaching program or leadership development program. But, you know, this is where communities, you know, guided by, you know, by by psychology trained coaches like myself. Right. This is this is our bread and butter. Right. And, yeah. and there are so many of us out there. And if anyone's looking for help, it, the best place may not be the psychologist or the psychotherapist in the first instance. It may well be, you know, a friendly coach yeah. that's also going to keep your feet to the fire about developing these new behaviours because it's hard for all of us. And we're going to have to be living like this for at least the next six months. So the sooner we put in a self-care routine around, it might be what is that first 30 minutes of your morning? Yeah. You know, it's not the computer. It's not. And when you go for a run, leave your or walk. I, you know, I'm seeing people out there walking and they're on their phones. They're not watching their kids. They're not looking at the park around them. They're on their phones. We must make boundaries around screen time. We must communicate when we are on, on 
and when we're not on, like on the email footer is a really good thing to do is what are your work hours, uh, you know, and what is your response time now to emails? What is your, um, you know, capacity for Zoom? I'm hearing people are on Zoom 10, 12 hours a day now because it's the way we're communicating, um, you know, both for work and for play. We must set boundaries. We're going to drive ourselves mad. This yeah, virus I, isn't going to kill us. Our own mental health will kill us. You know, and it's very interesting. Uh, Julie Morgenstern is an, a coach on organization, and she was on the Oprah show all the time. She was Oprah's coach on organization. Mm. And she was a friend of mine when we both started out together. I was deal dealing with the digital, and she was dealing with closets and file <laughs> folders. And uh, she wrote a book called uh, Don't Check Email in the Morning. Yeah. And that quote came from me. Um, and she said to me, I need to know your day. What's your day like? And I said, the moment my eyes are open, I then, this used computers more than cell phones in the days when she wrote that, I said, I get online and check my emails. And she said, how long does that take? And I said, anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half because I action on them then, otherwise I forget. And she said, okay, so the first tip is going to be never check emails in the morning. Get the important things done before the world pulls you in their direction by sending you an email. Um, and so I hadn't thought about getting back to that kind of approach, which came from a coach yeah. and look at what you're doing. So how do we find your group on <laughs> Facebook? Because you know I'm gonna have to be there. Oh, absolutely. It's leading, leading through crisis now. Okay. And uh, yeah, so you can just put that in the search or Leah Zalems, look me up on Facebook. Definitely, if you're watching this, resonating with this, connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, and this LinkedIn group is absolutely for leaders that are doing great things and desperate to help. It's also for coaches who are desperate to help. And I see so, so is this many... a LinkedIn group or a Facebook group? No, it's a Facebook group because okay. Facebook's much more friendly yeah, I know for, you know, communicating. And, um, and I will be running a 30-day mental health, mental toughness development. So to share some of my strategies and, and to ha help with accountability so that we can be there for ourselves and for others. But the message is very, very strong. That third, what is your morning ritual, Perry? You know, yeah. your first 30 minutes. Give yourself that love because you can't give away what you don't have, right? Yeah, you and, can't and you will run out if you don't replenish yourself. So to, to the viewers who are watching this, before we went live, I told you that I'm tired. We're just not sleeping. We're up till you know, three, four o'clock in the morning and then up again at seven because mm. you need to get these things done. And your coaching already is, I'm thinking when, we, when we're done, I'm calling my girlfriend and, <laughs> and you know, her, her daughter's six and she's very bright. But frankly, her daughter will survive not doing every activity sheet that the school decided she needs to do. Mm. And if uh, going out on her own quietly while her husband is at home in the, at eight o'clock in the morning instead of going with her daughter, who's going to be talking to her a lot, then she should go out alone at eight o'clock in the morning and, and her daughter will do fine without the structure that's supposed to change my girlfriend's life. And at some point we say, no, <laughs> I don't think so. If a teacher were trying to do this and you had school in session, you'd say, I oh, know I'm busy. I've got meetings. I've got whatever. And we can do it at eight o'clock at night or we can do it over the weekend. And we need to start saying no to others and those we think need our help. Yep. And this is where we've got to start saying no in our own heads to that negative saboteur or to that gotta, gotta, gotta right? Got to help others. Got to, got to, got to. And this is where, you know, working together, you know, is is where coaching really comes, uh, you know, to a fore. And it is in times of transition. We are in, in a time of extreme transition. It's the ideal time to reach out for a coach, right? And, and this is why, because, you know, it's like, what are the elements of our psychological well-being? They are autonomy, you know, freedom to choose. They are um, efficacy or our ability to succeed, our ability to do things, right? I know you can develop a, a self-care ritual and stick to it, Parry. And this, if you get support with this, you'll be able to do it faster. A coach gets you there faster. A good one that is right yeah, and really the third wonderful. thing can is related can you make me thin and younger too <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> 
Sorry. You know, <laughs> and this is where our, our attitude, our, our mental state, our mental health, it's on a spectrum, right? And so we can all start, like, where are we right now? First thing in the morning, a scale of one to 10, few deep breaths. What am I feeling? What am I feeling? Name the feeling. Ah, I'm feeling... Oh, I'm feeling, I'm still feeling tired. That's okay. I'm feeling stressed, but I'm feeling grateful. I'm free. You start naming some feelings and you can feel a whole spectrum of feelings at once. It's not just one thing, right? And, um, and, and rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. And if it's a four, what's, what is a six going to look like? And then what are some behaviors that can support you moving from a four to a six? So these sorts of things are just so much. You can you can self-coach. You can pick a book up. You can do an online course. But I'm telling you, this connection like we're having right now is much more fun and it's much faster because there's an energy transfer. You know, there's so much more. Like I'm, I'm just learning and growing so much more from what you stand for and your capacity and the kind of problems you're solving. Oh, we need you, Parry. You can't expire just yet. <laughs> I might not be able to get turn the gears back, but I could certainly help you get that energy to keep you going for the next 20 years. We're just getting started. You know, Stand, we are just getting standing started. on your blonde, all those things. I'll take those and a lot of funding. <laughs> So I, you know, it's interesting because I've yeah. used good coaches in the past from Julie yeah. Morgenstern to help me organize life to uh, Mark Hyman, who is the king of, of, um, of uh, inflammation. And he was my doctor and coach and all of these people. It's interesting because I respond sort of well to coaching and the kids who help me. <laughs> Um, are the, always the best athletes because they've been coached and they respond well to coaching. Uh, so I hadn't, I, I put it all together. So mental health and resilience and stuff. I never thought of it as the coaching end. And we, yeah. Leah, we need you and we need yeah. people like you. So you're going to have to let us know who else to trust to come yeah. together and coach us through this. We don't know when this is going to end. We may not have yeah. a job or we may not have it for long. Uh, we have everybody in close quarters. We have no toilet paper. <laughs> I don't. I think we're all preparing for blizzards in the United States. They're all going for water and toilet paper. Is it uh, okay? But we have all of these things, so we can't plan very well. Our planning needs to be short term. How are we going to get through this week? Um, how am I going to pay my mortgage? Uh, what should we buy? What shouldn't we buy? How much toilet paper do we need? And there's an app for that. So. <laughs> Um, it is an app for everything. And for yeah. everything. And senior citizens. I, we started a group that was going to, not coach, but support each other. We were calling it blue-haired babes. Um, and those of us who are have a different issue. I mean, you're younger. I'm, I'm older. I've got diabetes. There are a whole bunch of people my age who, in certain states, think we shouldn't be living. We should give up our lives so that we're not going to global warming. <laughs> or, or we're going to take money from the from the economy. I don't know if you've heard some of those reports out of the United States, but each of us has different things. And if we can pull together in a quiet moment, laugh maybe a little bit. Um, so I yeah. I'd love having yeah. you here. It wasn't I didn't intend on getting free coaching here, Leah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I can't and, help myself, Carrie. You know. Well, and, apparently I can't <laughs> either. Uh, but I think we need this. We need to know what's yeah. going to happen when this is over, and this will be over. They're always over. Um, yeah. So whether we dealt with living in New York and the days after Ground Zero, when we didn't know the, where the next bomb was going to drop or what was going to happen, and you know we've lost people every all of us here in this area mm -hmm. lost somebody or everybody in australia you know you lost people there too and and so as we look at this we need to know what we can do mm -hmm. the priorities i guess of those things we can do my closets are all clean i can't believe yeah yes yeah. that won't yet yeah, the closets are clean and now maybe it is the right time to be turning into our inside world and giving that a bit of a spring clean. And that's what really like a strong, um, you know, generative dialogue is what what our level of, of, of coaching conversations are. And that is the purpose of um, the Leading Through Crisis Now Facebook group is to give us a forum right, to, to, to bring ourselves to the table because leaders notoriously are not coachable. 
right? But yeah. it's just not, right? So we, that's a new learning for all of us. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, it, it, and this is the thing, but that's because you have so much internal resource. What do you really need a coach for? So, um, and, and, and coaches but now, slow you down. They slow you down. So we never think long term. <laughs> it's just in the next three hours, what do I need to get done? And if yes. two of it is plan, write it down, think about it, you'll be able to do more later. It's like, oh, forget that. I, you know. Yeah. Who's got time to reflect? <laughs> Who's got time to write about their feelings? Oh, I'm not in grief. I'm just a bit, you know, I'm a bit flustered right now, right? So that's, we've got to normalize that. And that's what we can do as leaders, right? Because, you know, we, and the faster we can move through the feelings, acknowledge them. And you see, we just don't, people who, you know, stay at the, the lower end of the, 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 you know, if, if you look at mental health, mental toughness on a scale of zero to 10, mental health, mental sensitivity, depression, all of that, you know, at the lower end is where people are if they haven't got a lifeline and they can't self-coach them through, right? And so this is where athletes or, you know, like people who have gone through significant leadership development programs, but even then, how much do they apply of what they learn, right? This is about leadership in action. This is about coaching the action. This is about thinking and acting and, and, and failing forward big time because we've got to fail even faster now. Wow. And what I'm really, really excited about is our scientists are getting their voices heard finally. And there is so much depending now on our scientists find, you know, creating the vaccine. Our global leaders are coming together. Our scientists are finally being supported. We needed to have this life and death situation for them to be recognized. Our healthcare workers are finally being respected and 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 supported, right? But you know, what could we do? We've got to get ourselves as healthy and as creative, We've got to move from uncertainty to creativity and co-creativity, yeah. right? And just bite the bullet and be coachable for a bit and see where that takes you, you know. And that's really what, what I'm aiming to do, um, you know, with, with that group. And, again, it's going to be people showing up and how do we show up better on video? How do we show up and better facilitate? What gaps are we seeing? How do we, you know, um, you know, what resources are available to fill those gaps? And you're absolutely right. I have, you know, so many coaches I can recommend and, um, and, and this is where because coaches are notoriously bad at selling them, some think that's, you know, that's really bad thing to do. So um, whereas my background for coaching was in, um, in healthcare and scientific sales. So human behaviour has always been at the core. Why do we do what we do? How do we do it? How do we create a better human experience? And now I'm specifically focusing on how we think because if we think better, we can do better. Well, you know, so, I, was, I was trying yeah. to think about what we do next, because, you know, we have to do something. And I'll we get do. your Facebook group. And I don't do Facebook groups other than my golden doodle. Um, but I think <laughs> that maybe we can talk about pairing and getting some others that you know and trust in place. Yeah. And consulting for a lot of the employers who have sent their employees home to work and don't realize why they're stressed, they may not come back to work, they can't get the quality of work done, because they're yeah. juggling all of this. And maybe on the tech side, on my end, and the practical tips I can give there, and on the coaching in life and balance and yeah. all of those yeah. with you, that's going to help a lot of companies who are still looking to get the benefit and the value of all these employees they have, wherever they're working. And I think they need some of that. Maybe you could teach me how to coach. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, and, and th this is always part of what I do is everything I do is transferable skills Love it. and because I want you to be self-sufficient I want you to be a better version of you than when we started otherwise what what difference has it made right uh, and you I'm know, a lawyer. Not I'm a lawyer. Lawyer. we're used to telling everybody what to do all the time <laughs> so I've got a license <laughs> So, but Leah, I, I love you. What I want everyone to know, too, is that yeah. we've had some pretty serious conversation here, but I want everyone to know that I asked you if you'd uh, do a LinkedIn Live with me, and you said, sure, that you hadn't done one before, but we'll figure it out. And you were so organized. I, I said, let's do it. We'll do it in you know four days. And he was like, send me the link. And how are we promoting this? And then, and what are we going to call it? And I was like, uh, I don't know. We'll just talk and people watch it afterwards. And um, you sent me a graphic. And you worked on a graphic on Canva, which is Australian and wonderful. And we hope to be working. 
But you put one together with our pictures on it. You gave it a name and everything. You told everybody in different time zones. So I was like, what do I do with this graphic? I'm not sure, but I just put it out and I shared it with people. So you get things done and you yeah. understand from the role of people where I am, how I wouldn't have thought of a graphic or didn't have the time to do a graphic. And I'm still trying to program our websites that I stupidly took down three months ago because I found some errors and references to my space. So I decommissioned my stopcyberbullying.org and .com and the new site and all these things. And now I've got to rewrite thousands of pages and get somebody to get it up. And so I appreciate how easy you made this for me. And um, you know, people meet for a reason, Leah, uh, you know, whether it's yeah. God or synchronicity or karma, I'll take it any way mm -hmm. you want to do it. And I'm sure we've met for a very important reason. In the meantime, I've got a graphic. Yes. And, and so thank, thank you. Thank you for that. And that's all learned skills. Right? That's, that's learned. And it's not natural for me at all. I'm a talker, not a, not a graphics person, but I've just learned to do it. And isn't that right? And isn't that what a coach does is make things easier? And what this is what a lawyer does is make things, you know, safer and easier and 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 or and more secure, complicated, right? Or more complicated, complicated <laughs> typically. Yes. <laughs> but we, you know, we need you more than ever. We need more contracts. We need, you know, the the terms and conditions of engagement. And we need that in writing. We also, but this is where I guess my side of it is very much the how do we communicate? What do we communicate? How do we communicate? And remember that it is you it is the, the 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 essence of you is your energy your tone is who you are right now and everybody is enough right now to turn on a video and put out a message and start co-creating as we because we're both you know on we both put ourselves out there not doing it perfectly that's how we've collided Right, and now we're going to co-create something. And uh, and I have to say, New York is my all-time favorite city. I ran the New York New York Marathon in 2016, wow. and a million people cheered me on. Every eye I caught along that road was, "You can do this, Mama! You can do this, Mama!" And man, I carry that with me in my heart every time I run a marathon. That will never leave me. And uh, Together we're going to get through this and uh, we're going to come out so much better on the other side. I just know it, Harry. And I think we're, you're right. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate this and it is that energy and it is what we can do. And my one mm -hmm. tip for all of those people out there, especially women, if somebody wants to do a conference call and it's not something that you have to watch and you have, they're going to be showing you slides and other things, you turn off the video and uh, not worry about whether you've got lipstick on or what your hair looks like or how dressed you are. Yeah. Uh, it's this they're looking for. And if they're looking for something else, all the men are saying, no, we want video. Well, they don't have to wear makeup. So, we, you know, we need to make our lives a little easy. So if you're doing a call, absolutely. Yeah, now, but but on that note too is when you're on those calls, though, it is important. Come with the intention of what can I give? Yep. Come with an intention of asking a question, making a comment, get your voice in the room and get your voice in the room early. I think it was Sheryl Sandberg that there was, you know, there was some around that, you know, taking your place in the boardroom. The video room is now the new boardroom and we must take our seat. We must not give it up for someone else. We must take that seat and we must speak up and we must be get get over our fear of what other people think. Yeah. We just have to put that aside. There's no easy fix for that, but action cures fear. Action breeds courage, right? We've got to step into the ring, as Brene Brown would say, you know, and boy, you know, daring to lead, you know, this is where all of this, we've got to feel the vulnerability and do it anyway. And maybe now is our time more than ever because we are primarily, generally, the ones responsible for the kids and getting the meal yeah. on the table and making sure yeah. that the dogs walked when they're supposed to and the laundry's done and, and that uh, things are paid when they're supposed to be paid. And we have the ability uh, as a gender, I think, to balance a lot more. It's the nature of who we are. But I think yeah. we need to be prouder of that and more comfortable with it and turn around and say, you know, I'm not a man and I don't want to be and I have something no. special to offer and stand up and say my voice can be heard and my voice will make a difference in what we're doing so 
Hear, hear to that. Yeah. And this is where my mental toughness training around confidence, certainty, challenge, control, it absolutely forms the foundation so that we can speak and not be as, you know, so concerned it's not perfect. But again, on that more, you know, typically women are natural communicators as well, often, you know, more so than men. So you know, let's step into that um, and let's be that leader that um, that we want to be, that we need to be for our families, for our children. Because remember, they're watching us and they're taking our energy first and foremost before they are listening to anything else. And that's why... We've so got to take care of ourselves. So we've got enough. You've got to fill our cup with the good stuff so that it's the good stuff that they're, they're feeling from us too. Well, Leah, we're going to have to get you back as soon as we can because I need my second mm. session of coaching. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I really appreciate this. And, and especially the Australians. You know, I live in the United States and my husband's Canadian. And uh, I have so many friends in Australia and so many volunteers in Australia, uh, but they have been so great at stepping up. And uh, yeah. from John Rouse, who's finding all these bad guys who are trying to rape our children online, to uh, Cheryl yeah. Varden, who, you know, heads women and children, is a commissioner in, in Queensland, to uh, Nicole Stevenson, who heads my programs there, and you and so many others who are just stepping up saying, I can help. I'm brave. I'm Australian. It, the bravery has to come with every Australian as part of your DNA. And and I want to thank you and and keep everybody that I know around the world, but especially in Australia, well and safe. So be good. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Perry. I love and, you uh, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>